a structure must be safe and serviceable uh, so that <clears throat> our design that we design for the ultimate the state can serve uh, with the intended purpose for example if we if we design as a bridge so the the bridge can sustain the load from the cars and so on and also for example um, building for the school yeah so it must can serve the purpose of learning and also uh, any activities for example uh, gathering and so on so that is called serviceability um, the most important serviceability uh, parameter is deflection and cracking Okay, now uh, let's go first with the deflection. Uh, so the deflection must not uh, exceed with the certain limit. For example, if we uh, consider with the appearance, the deflection must not greater than L over 250. Yeah? L over 50, as you can see here, it must not greater than L over 250 for the appearance. In for the um, non-structural damage during the construction, the deflection must not greater than L over 500. Um, if um, the deflection exceeded, you can see here, uh, there's a crack underneath the beam. Yeah? You can see here, this is the wall. Yeah? It, it will still crack like this. It shows that uh, we must uh, check whether the deflection of the beam on top of this uh, brick, a brick wall, is greater, whether greater than permissible. The permissible is L over 250. It's be considered uh, of the appearance. Okay. Let's erase first. Okay. Now, uh, actually, in EC two, we have a uh, two uh, method of. Sorry, we, your friend just in. Okay, we, uh, as I said just now, we have two methods in order to control the um, deflection. The first method is limiting span to depth ratios. It is stated in clause 742. And the other method is calculation of actual deflection as um, highlighted in clause 743. Um, and both methods can be used and it must uh, the, 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 the limiting span that we calculated must not exceed L over 250 yeah, for the uh, appearance of a slab or beam or cantilever beam subjected to quasi-permanent loads. So what is quasi-permanent loads? Uh, it is actually the load that sustained by the slab, for example, the imposed load and the permanent load. The, the type of load uh, will be dis discussed after this lecture. Okay, so the second one is that if we consider the finishes or partition, um, so we must consider that the L over D or limiting span over depth ratios does not exceed span over 500. 500 sorry. Sorry, that's your friend. Um, 
okay checking for the deflection all right uh, we have seen just now we have two methods and um, but in this course uh, I will teach you how to uh, check the cracking uh, not cracking deflection using the simplest one that is the first method limiting span to depth ratios okay so in this method uh, we must calculate l over d allowables uh, is equal l over d basic yeah l over d basic don't be confused with this one l over d allowable is equal l d basic time modification factors yeah? so we have to consider many modification factors such as highlighted here that is the first one modification factor due to flinch uh, modification factor due to span and modification factor due to tension reinforcement therefore this is called allowable uh, it must be greater than l over the actual yeah? this is l over the actual meaning that the l of the beam divided by d that we have in the design so in order to uh, the beam safe from the excessive deflection or l over d 250 just now uh, this is the comparison that we have to make without calculating the the the, the actual the, the using the long equation so we can um, we can Consider that L over D allowable greater than L over the actual can give a beam uh, safe from the excessive deflection. Okay, just now uh, I've mentioned L over D basic and over L over D basics can be obtained from this formula. It is, uh, this formula can be obtained in your book or in the design formula booklet. So, uh, L over the basic is actually depend on the two equation here. Sorry. The first equation is L over the basic K11 plus 1.5 and so on. And the second equation is L over the basic K11 and plus 1.5 and so on. So, these two uh, equation the difference is that the first one uh, doesn't have a compression reinforcement. Yeah? This is compression is reinforcement. Uh, where is it? So you can see the difference is the the last part of the yeah, not the last part. This part and this part. This is the difference between the two equations. So we have the same uh, coefficient k, the k, k. Yeah. So what is rho naught? Rho naught is reference reinforcement. This is yeah, rho naught is uh, square root f c k grid of concrete times ten to the power of minus three, uh, while rho is the tension reinforcement a s required divided b d. And rho dash is the required compression reinforcement, AS required divided BD. Okay, so um, it's stated here required. What is required? Required is the area of steel that you obtain directly from the calculation during the design. Uh, it is uh, like when you got K and then you find Z, then you got AS. That AS that you determine is the AS required. Okay, um, so if your uh, row, that is the percentage of tension reinforcement, less or equal than row naught, the reference reinforcement, therefore, we, use, we must use equation one, while otherwise, you need to use equation two. So, Need to erase first. So just now I said uh, this both equation we have k right. 
So K is K can be obtained from table 4.1. Uh, this is uh, this table uh, give us the K for FYK 500 with a great concrete C30 over 35. Um, for example, for the first one, simply spotted beam, K is one. Yeah, the K is one. For N span of continuous beam or one way continuous slab, it is 1.3, yeah, the K value. And then interior span of beam, 1.5. Spare, uh, slab supported on a column 1.2 and can deliver 0 0.4. Okay, the K, the value of K, and this is the um, L over D basic. Yeah, L over D basic is equal 14 if it is if the row less than 1.5 percent uh, and concrete if the if the beam has a a tension reinforcement 0 0.5, so we get the LD basic, let's say for the simplest part, 20. This value is obtained from the equation uh, just now, equation 1 or 2, yeah, depend on the row and row desk. Yeah. So this is uh, example if we use C30 and FYK500. The value of L, L over the basic. So this is actually L over the basic that obtained from equation one or equation two. Equation one or two. So we have uh, if your tension rate was 1.5%. Will get 14, and if your uh, tension reinforcement is 0 0.5, you will get 20. Yeah, this is from the equation one or equation two with k 1.0, right? Okay, uh, this is the um, the uh, illustration of the figure uh, to describe this table. Yeah, in this table we have simply spotted beam with K one and span of continuous beam one point three, um, interior span of beam one point five, can deliver zero point four, and uh, you can all right can see the figure that describe the uh, description in the table. So this is cantilever beam, yeah. This is called cantilever. Cantilever. So if you design cantilever beam, so L, uh, the K is 0 0.4. This is simply spotted. Yeah, everyone knows 1.0. So this is for the end span. If you have uh, like a continuous beam, yeah, continuous, what is continuous beam? It's more than one span. Yeah, so it is continuous beam. So your K, if you consider deflection at, uh, for this span, K is 1.3. While if it is interior span, yeah, we have span, this side, and also this side, also you got another span. So if you consider deflection at this span, the K is 1.5. Okay, now, just now we have established the L over the basic. So now uh, we look, uh, what is the modification factors that we need to consider? So the first one is modification due to flange. Yeah, for example, we have a T-beam here. So the, the top dimension, we call it as BEFF. Yeah, you have uh, already know how to calculate BEFF, do you? 
and also BW here, BWEB. Okay, for this, uh, the, the, the shape of this beam will contribute the modification, modification factors in where um, if BWFF, the dimension at the top here, divided by BW, greater than 3, then we multiply it by 0 0.8. Yeah. If only BEFF divided by BW greater than eight, uh, greater than three, then you must multiply it by zero point eight. Yeah. If it is uh, rectangular, therefore uh, it is equal to one. Yeah. So we don't need to consider the the factor due to modification of flange. Okay. Second modification is about the span length. Yeah, this is applied if the span here is greater than 7. Otherwise, you don't have to consider it. Uh, it so if your length is 9, then but the factor is 7, yeah, the 7 divided by 9. All right, this is the sec second modification. And the third modification is uh, due to tension reinforcement. Yeah. So you're provided, AS provided, divided by AS required. And what is AS provided? AS provided is that the area of steel that you look at the table, appendix at the back of your book, divided by the required, when you calculated, we'll get AS required. So if provided, divided by required, less or equal than 1.5, so you need to multiply this ratio to the DDL uh, over the basic. So if the value greater than 1.5, so you need to take 1.5 as the modification factor due to tension reinforcement. Okay, now look at the this example. So we have the simply spotted beam here. We have a simply spotted beam with L and um, we have designed this uh, beam, which resulted uh, 2H12 for the uh, compression reinforcement and 6H20 for the tension reinforcement. And L here given is 8. Yeah? So B250 and D550. So the characteristic of concrete is 25. Characteristic of steel, 500. The tension areas required, yeah, this is when you calculate, you get AS required, 1663. And when you provide the steel, by looking at the table, at the back, uh, uh, table of steel, you, you, you provide 1885. Uh, and also for the compression steel, when we, you require, uh, you, you calculate, you have, you got 200, while this one is when you provide, yeah. So check the beam for the deflection. Is it exceed the allowable or uh, less than the allowable? Yeah? We must remember that a beam that we design must has uh, L over the actual less than the allowable. Yeah? Okay, now look at the solution. Remember just now the, this, the, the, uh, the most important thing is that L over L over the allowable must greater than L over the actual. Yeah. So what is uh, L over the allowable is the L over the basic time with modification factors. And we have three modification here. Yeah. So uh, let's calculate. Um, but I have to delete first this one. Okay, so now remember just now we have two equation here. Uh, we have two equation, the equation one and equation two. And um, we need to calculate row not, row not and the row. Yeah, that's why here the solution begins with the row. Row is the a percentage of tension reinforcement divided BD. So our required given is 
1663. So 1663 divided by B and D. So we have 0 0.012. So reference reinforcement is FCK square root times 10 to the minus 3. So we have 0, 0, 005. So now we need to compare rho and rho naught. So our rho is actually greater than rho naught. Yeah, rho naught here, 0 0.005. Therefore, we use equation two. Yeah. This is the equation two. L over D K eleven plus one point five square root F C K rho naught plus yeah, here, just follow the equation. Okay, the K is one eh, because this is simply spotted, yeah, the K. So from the calculation, we have 14.75. Yeah, this is the allowable, uh, the basic. Yeah, this is called basic, L over the basic. Okay, then we proceed with the, uh, the modification factor here. Yeah? This is actually calculation for the modification factor. So the first modification factor is here, yeah, due to span. So since the span is greater than seven, so we need a modification factor, seven divided by span. So you have seven over eight here, okay. The second modification is that still area provided, yeah. We, we, don't, we don't calculate the flange because our beam is simply uh, is a rectangular beam. So if you design rectangle, rectangular beam, so we need to ignore the uh, modification factor due to flange. So now we proceed with the uh, tension area still. This is your friend, okay. Okay, so modification factor for the steel area provided is AS provided given is 185 divided by AS required. So you got 1.113 and this is less than 1.5. Yeah, so now our allowable here, uh, this is allowable, yeah, this is L over the allowable. Sorry. Okay, this is allowable actually, yeah. Uh, okay. L over the allowable is 14.75. Okay. This is allowable, yeah, this is allowable. So this is, we got just now is uh, the uh, basic span over depth times the 0 0.88 due to the uh, span greater than 7 time 1.13 is due to a uh, modification factor for the uh, tension steel. So we have 14.63. Mama Ashrik, yeah. Okay, actual span effective depth. We have the span length divided by 550, so we have 14.5. So we must, we compare the um, allowable with the uh, actual. Therefore, our allowable is greater than the actual. Therefore, the beam is safe from the excessive deflection. Okay, any, any question? Doctor, yeah. uh, nak tanya yang untuk modification factor yang greater than 7 meter uh. kalau dia kurang daripada 7 tu macam mana kita okay. nak continue? Okay, ignore. ignore. Oh, okay. Uh, yang tu hanya untuk uh, kalau ya, modi modification factor if if your span exceeding 7 meter. 
So let's say kalau you, you punya span is 6 meter ke 5 meter, so you don't consider this lah. Okay, terima kasih doktor. Okay. Ada lagi soalan? Doktor, kalau 7 meter? 7 meter, tak ada apa-apa juga lah. 7 divided 7, 1 lah kan. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, any more question? Hamza, Hamza Bukti, are you here? Hamza. Takde eh? Jani? Siapa lagi tadi eh? Okay, takde eh? Alright, so we go to the next one eh? Okay, cracking. Eh? So this is the second element in serviceability limit state. Yeah. So um, similar with the uh, deflection, cracking also must not be excessive. Yeah. So um, cracking is actually due to maybe due to flexural tensile stress. Remember last time eh, when we um, when we discuss about the uh, about the under reinforced and over reinforced, right? Okay, so this beam it shows under reinforced, yeah. So this is this is called flexural tensile crack yeah? because uh, it is located at a mid span. Let's say this is mid span, yeah. This is mid span, yeah. Kalau mid span the tegak, eh? mid span. So this is due to bending, yeah. So flexural tensile stress, yeah. So uh, we want to avoid this one. Yeah? Sometimes cracks happen uh, uh, before the beam uh, receive the uh, you know uh, ultimate ultimate load. Yeah. Okay. Diagonal tension. Remember, yeah, diagonal tension at the beam. Yeah, last time. Yeah. Diagonal tension yeah, near to the support due to shear under applied load yeah uh, crack also happen due to volume changes uh, you can see here nampak ni eh? due to volume changes yeah, when you cast the concrete uh, let's say um, uh, from the day 1 and day 30 you can see there's a crack as uh, micro crack at 30 days eh? due to the volume changes eh? creep thermal chemical if effects and also sometimes crack due to bond and encourage failure yeah. uh, last time um, when we consider how to get cover yeah uh, the main steel yeah the main steel and uh, the steel and the uh, concrete um Maybe there, there are cracks between the steel and the concrete eh, due to the uh, splitting, eh, due to bond and um, encourage failure. Yeah, therefore, cracking here that we consider is the cracking that uh, must not be excessive during the service. Eh? Uh, the, crack, uh, the crack must be limit to to the to the uh, certain value yeah okay your friend yeah, just want to join Izam and Aisha okay okay um Okay, now the primary objective of control is uh, control crack is to limit the width of individual cracks. Yeah? So our intention here is not to control the whole crack. The, our objective is to uh, is to control so that the certain value of crack will not be attained. Yeah? Uh, I will uh, elaborate this after this. Um, similar with the deflection, control control of uh, cracking also can be obtained through two methods. The first method is 
uh, without direct calculation. This is uh, can be obtained in plus 733. And another is uh, by calculation of the crack width. So here uh, in, in our um, course, we only consider the first one. That is, we control the cracking without calculate the width of crack. Yeah, we just control the spacing and also control the amount of steel. So we are now using the first method. The second method is we will calculate what is the crack width. So this second method, um, if you want to know more, uh, maybe you can join the, you know, your final year. We have a concrete, uh, what do you call? Elective, yeah, in elective course, the second one. Okay, limiting crack. So just now, uh, our method is just to control the crack in the beam or in the slab, yeah, with a certain value. So that we have two type of uh, crack width. The first is 0 0.3, as you can see here, 0 0.3, and the second one is 0 0.4 millimeter. So, uh, which which uh, crack which uh, crack width that you should uh, choose is depend on the on the condition of your beam. For example, um, if you consider that your beam under quasi permanent combination of load, that means you have uh, uh, loads like uh, life load or permanent load. Yeah, permanent load is, is the load from the self weight of the uh, beam and also uh, imposed load or uh, life load is uh, load from, for example, from people. Yeah, it's called uh, uh, life load. So both combination of load and it quasi quasi permanent. That means the load will be stay for a long time on the, on the, in the room. So we must consider the crack width is 0 0.3. Um, for the water tightness also can be limit to 0 0.3. Yeah? But for the water retaining structures, we cannot tolerate with the crack limits. Yeah? So the crack limit will be zero for the uh, water retaining structures. Eh? For the building, it is 0 0.3. Okay, uh, the second one, 0 0.4 millimeter. The second one, 0 0.4 millimeter. Uh, in the absence of, uh, absent, in the absence of requirement of appearance, yeah, this, this category is if you don't bother about the appearance, yeah. Crack will bother our eyes, right? So in that case, we must consider 0 0.3. If you don't bother, so you can select 0 0.4. This is, for example, for the exposure classes XC0 and XC1. Remember what is XC1? It is in the building for low humidity, right? And XCO is the uh, in the building as well, but uh, without reinforcement. Yeah? Okay, so as uh, we just, our method is just to control the cracking. So we have three methods here. The first method is uh, by providing minimum reinforcement area of concrete. Sorry, minimum reinforcement area. Second one, provide the bus size less than the maximum bar. The third one is provide the maximum spacing of, provide um, spacing that left Why is it? Ashura. Ada apa Ashura? You want to talk something? Nak cakap ke? Okay, the third one is uh, maximum spacing of the reinforcement. Okay. Okay. So again, yeah, cracking can be controlled by three ways. The first way is that we calculate the minimum error reinforcement and we make sure that the provide, provided reinforcement must be greater than the minimum. The second one is that the bar size, the bar size of uh, 
tension reinforcement must not less uh, must not exceed the the uh, maximum bar. Uh, the third one is that the spacing between reinforcement must less than the maximum spacing that we will calculate. Yeah. All right. The first one. Okay. Minimum area reinforcement. So this is the um, the equation for the AS mean. Uh, it is equal with 0 0.26 FCTM divided FYK BWD. So FCTM is, uh, I have explained to you last time, yeah, what is FCTM? Concrete tensile, mean tensile stresses in concrete. Yeah. Okay, so you get AS mean. All right, so B. Here is the BW, although you, you uh, uh, design T-beam, yeah? uh, you, you must use BW in this equation. Second one is the maximum bar size. Okay, last time we don't bother uh, what is the maximum bar size for our beam, right? So actually there are, uh, the, there are limitation, yeah? All this while we just consider the area and then we find the number of steel in the appendix. Yeah, actually, uh, you need to consider um, uh, the limitation of the bar size. So from here, it, table point three, uh, it provides us, it guides us what is the bar size, maximum bar size that we should use for a beam or slab. Yeah? The most important thing is that we must calculate the service stress. And this is service stress. This is service stress. FS is the service stress. Okay. Since why service stress? Since we are now um, checking serviceability limit state, so that's why we use the service stress. Service stress is the uh, so, uh, stress that derived from the load, from the service load. Yeah, service load. Service load is load that we use without uh, uh, without safety factor. Yeah. So I will explain you more in the uh, loading uh, in the. The next lecture, all right. So FS is equal FYK. You can see here FYK is the the, the strength of the steel divided the factor of safety times GK. GK is the dead load. Zero point three QK is the imposed load or variable load, permanent load, variable load divided by one point three five uh, permanent load plus one point five. QK is the variable load. One of uh, delta. Delta is redistribution. Redistribution, yeah. This is redistribution. Redistribution. Okay. So um, for now, we assume that delta is equal to one. Equal to one, yeah. Okay, we will see later for this one. But uh, now we just assume it is equal to one. GK and QK will also, I will explain it to you after this lecture. We have uh, next lecture about GK and QK. Okay, now let's say you, you already have the value of GK and QK. So we have FS here. From this calculation here, uh, this is the FS, yeah? this is column FS, okay, this is the column of the crack, WK is crack, eh? crack is called WK, this is crack, this is crack width, so now we have two choice of WK, so if you consider about appearance, so we have to consider 0 0.3, yeah? 
So if let's say you got Fs, your value is zero. Let's say you, your, your value is 250, you hear. Let's say you got 270, 270 something, yeah, 270 here. Yeah. Meaning that um, your maximum bar must be um, less than 16. Yeah? The value must be less than 16. So you can get here from, you can get the value here. You do, you can do interpolation. Yeah. So maximum value that you must provide in the st in the beam is between 12 to 16. So maybe, um, maybe you get 15. Eh? So you can round it, round, round it up to 16, something like that. Yeah. Uh, but if you don't consider the appearance, yeah, it's slightly higher here. Okay. Therefore, now we know that in a beam, there's a condition or uh, limitation about the bar size. Yeah? So you can refer to this 4.3. Okay. Um, let erase first. Okay, okay. The last one is the maximum spacing of reinforcement. Yeah, just now we have calculated the area of steel required in the beam. The second one is a uh, determination of the bus maximum bus size, and the last one is finding the uh, maximum spacing between reinforcement. Yeah. So for the maximum spacing, we need to refer table four point two here. 4.2. Again, we need, to, we need to calculate what is the service stress. Yeah? The service stress uh, we have calculated just now. Okay. Uh, so, again, if our value is 270, then we can get the maximum spacing between 200 and 150. So again, you can do the interpolation here, right? So that is the how we can get the maximum bar spacing yeah, for the crack control. So these three element is to control the crack, right? Although you have designed, yeah, you, uh, according to the um, ultimate limit state, let's say you got uh, uh, the diameter of steel uh, 25 but when but when you uh, check yeah to crack control and you determine it must be less than 16 millimeter diameter then you need to change from 20 to 16 millimeter okay let's see now we have the example here okay Let's say now we have a, a beam with given GK. GK is the permanent, yeah, permanent, permanent load, yeah, permanent load, and QK is the variable load, variable, variable load that is a, a load that can move, movable load in the room. Yeah. Let's say we have a QK is ten kilonewton meter, while a permanent load is nineteen point six. Yeah. So permanent load is the uh, load that permanently on the beam. Yeah. So the span is 8.25 meter. So the, the design has been carried out yeah, with the compression steel, 3H12, and uh, the tension steel, 6H20. We, we, uh, the D is 587 with the cover, 35 and the grade of complete 30. So check the cracking for the beam. Okay, now the first uh, criteria is that for control, control the cracking is calculate the AS mean. Yeah, the AS mean here. So uh, 
what is the important here is that you, what is the value of FCPM? Yeah. I got 2.0. This uh, you can refer to the um, formula here. Okay. View, uh, rotate view. Okay. So, so our um, grade is 30 right now. Yeah, 30 here. So, FCTM. So, our SFCT, FCTM is 2.9. Yeah, 2.9. FCTK 2.0. Okay. So our value is actually 2.9. Ini actually is 2.9. 2.9. Okay. And value kat sini pun jadi 221 eh. 2, 2. 2, 2, 1. Okay. Are you okay? Dengar tak? Nampak tak? Nampak tak? Okay. Ah, okay. Tadi saya tersilap tengok ni eh. Nanti uh... Sekejap eh. Okay. Um... Okay. Uh... Saya ulang balik lah eh. Okay. Uh, so we have new new AS min two two one, yeah, uh, so that um, H eight H H six H twenty satu lapan lapan lima ni the provide right. So the provide now is greater than two two one. So therefore, it is okay for control of cracking. Let's say the the uh, AS min yeah is greater than provided here. So you must choose the AS min. Okay. Okay, the next one. The next one is uh, maximum bus size. Eh? As I said just now, maximum bus size must be determined as well. Yeah? Okay, so last time when we designed, we don't bother about, we don't consider what is the bus, maximum bus size in the beam, right? So now we know, we know that there are uh, method, there is a method to determine what is the bar, maximum bus size in a beam or in a slab uh, by looking at table 4.3. Yeah? So the first step is that we calculate FS, FS the service stress, eh? because now we are considering the serviceability limit state. So the stress that we consider also must be in, must be service stress. So service stress is equal, uh, inilah eh, shown in the equation. Yeah, so GK, QK, GK is the permanent load, yeah, permanent load from the slab, from the beam, uh, is actually from the uh, weight of concrete, QK is the variable. Variable load is like people. Eh? People will come and go in a room eh? so that the weight of people will be, will be considered as QK. And delta, eh? delta here is the redistribution and we assume it as one yeah? uh, because we have not considered yet so far. So from this equation, we have the new value. So we have 220, new, new uh, Newton per millimeter square. Um, 
from the value, yeah, you, it, it is somewhere here. Yeah? <coughs> somewhere here. So now we need to find what is the maximum uh, bar size. Okay, before we uh, determine the maximum bar size, we must also bear in mind that what is the limiting value for the crack? If we consider the appearance, so we must choose 0 0.3 millimeter. Therefore, the value of a maximum diameter of bar is somewhere here between these two values, 16 to 25. So the, the value you can get from the interpolation and uh, from uh, my calculation, uh, I got 21. 21 millimeter yeah therefore um, we don't have 25 millimeter right therefore the maximum value uh, for the so that uh, the provided steel um, diameter is the appropriate one is h20 so if you remember just now the diameter of tension steel is 6 h20 yeah, the diameter is 20. Therefore, uh, it is less than the maximum that allowed in the beam. Therefore, this diameter 20 is okay for the control cracking. Yeah. Uh, next is the maximum spacing of reinforcement. Okay, I need to erase first. Okay. So by using the FS from the previous um, determination of bar, uh, maximum bar diameter, so now we, we, we use the same value. Uh, so it is 20, 220, yeah, 220 with here, somewhere here. And our limit, uh, the crack limit is 0 0.3. So the value is between 200 and 250. Again, you need to calculate by using the interpolation. Yeah. From the interpolation, I got 2 to 5. Right? So this is the maximum spacing between bars. Yeah. Okay. So we need to check our design just now. Is it the spacing less or greater than 2 to 5? Yeah. If the spacing is greater than 2 to 5, then you need to add um, more steel yeah? so that it will fulfill uh, the, the, the our intention to control the crack okay we need to erase first okay now how to determine the spacing the spacing for the beam the given beam yeah just now we have calculated that S max is 2 to 5. Therefore, S here, S, this is S is the clear spacing. Yeah? You can see from the figure, S is clear spacing between bars. Yeah? We have here, from here to here, and from here to here. Yeah? The, the, the spacing must be same, this one. Yeah? So we have this formula. This is not the fixed formula. It depends on how you arrange the 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 steel in the beam yeah so according to the arrangement uh, s is equal bw yeah the bw minus to cover first cover second cover left and right minus two diameter link the diameter of the link minus three diameter of bar one two three divided by two yeah because we want to find the s so one s two s so the divided by two so now we have 52 millimeter so it is actually less than s max therefore it is uh, good yeah the arrangement is sufficient for control cracking all right that is how we um, check the cracking so any question other so Alan Ada soalan? Belum lagi, Doktor. Belum ada lagi, ya? Okey. 
Uh, doctor? Huh? Uh, for the two times X, uh, where does the X come from? The part of diameter link, right? The two times X. Yeah, diameter of the link. Yeah, this is diameter of the link, sorry. I forgot the thing. Okay. Can, can we rest two minutes? <laughs> two minutes, yeah? Before yeah. we slide, okay.